A very popular article on our website is how we've configured SOLIDWORKS to run really nicely on a MacBook using an installation of Parallels. A lot of people want to see how well this works firsthand. So over the next few minutes, I'll talk you through the differences we see in performance over a standard installation on Parallels with no modifications, and then show you the modified solution. Firstly, let's take a look at Parallels in action on the Mac. Everyday Mac users don't want to be turning their machine off to boot up in Bootcamp just to access Windows, and nobody really wants to run two computers if they can help it. So Parallels offers a useful alternative. We can just double click and start a Windows session. This is great if you need to switch between your email, Keynote, and then back to Windows, as everything is running all at the same time. Your files are available in both operating systems, so another big benefit over Bootcamp. Because we are effectively running two operating systems, we need to be conscious of the resource that's available. Parallels allows us to control how much resource is assigned to the install of Windows, and can be adjusted if it isn't enough. I would always assume that half the RAM your Mac has should be assigned to the Windows install, so make sure your Mac is a decent spec, as we will want at least 8GB available to us to run SOLIDWORKS nicely. With Windows up and running, let's start SOLIDWORKS. We'll take a look at the performance out of the box in this configuration first. On selecting a plane, it takes a while to paint all the edges properly. The same behaviour can be seen when selecting a feature from the feature tree. On small models, this may not seem like an issue, but on larger models and assemblies, it can be very frustrating. Let's open a largish assembly and have a look at performance. Rotational speed is not great, and selecting components from the graphics area is very slow. Cross-sectioning can cause problems too. Switching over to a drawing, we could also see some slow performance there. Moving over to our modified configuration, we'll go through the same steps. So selecting the plane is nice and quick, and picking a feature from the tree for selection is good too. Let's cross-section the model again, and we can see that the performance is on par with a fairly generic spec PC. You can also enable real view graphics on the Mac. We wouldn't recommend this depending on your RAM and graphics card as it doesn't give the same level of performance, but it is possible. Let's take a look. Straight away we can see that the model looks a lot better, but the rotation is a bit slower as we are taxing the graphics a little bit more. I personally wouldn't want to run with real view on all the time, so you can turn it off from the heads up toolbar at the top of the interface. So we can enable the option and then you have the choice as to when to turn it on. We've highlighted some of the performance differences between the configurations so you can see for yourself whether running on a Mac in this way would work for you. We've used Parallels and Windows with some small modifications to the registry to make this work. Everything is reversible. You can access your files in Windows from the Mac OS and vice versa without shutting down. In over have around 20 customers using this on a daily basis, and for general SOLIDWORKS modeling and assembly creation, it works very well. For other associated programs like Visualize or Simulation, it's not recommended, as we just can't address enough of the machine's power to make them work nicely. For these types of programs, a Windows-based machine would be a better fit. If you would like to know more about this or see a live demonstration of SOLIDWORKS running on a Mac, please get in contact with us. Thank you.